Void Sphere. Its Path of Exile take on Black Hole skills. When it was first released, I knew that nothing would stand between me and trying it out. However, when I saw that it's a cooldown based spell that is meant to support other skills, I was disappointed. That's until not too long when GGG released Transfigured Gems. We have Void Sphere of Rending now, a recently buffed variant of Void Sphere that has no cooldown and can be casted freely. My hype was back. So I decided to utilize every single spell damage scaling mechanic I know about to make this build as good as possible. Because nothing would stand between us and giving monsters the suck. So, as usual we begin with our ascendancy. We are an occultist. Occultist is the best ascendancy for supporting chaos builds. First we begin with Void Beacon. This node shreds 20 flat cold and chaos resistance from nearby enemies. It also halts their entire life region which is especially useful if Maven is witnessing the fight. After this node we path to Withering Presence. This node increases our total chaos damage by 15%. It also grants us a big chunk of chaos resistance and passively inflicts Wither debuff on nearby enemies once every second. This is good, although not for building all 15 stacks but to retain them because we have other means of inflicting Wither on enemies. Wither makes enemies take 6% increased chaos damage per stack up to a maximum of 100%. Anyway from here we take the occultist OG explode node and that is Profane Bloom. Despite our massive 200% increased investment in area of effect, Void Sphere AoE is still quite small, which in my opinion is a huge balancing mistake from GG side. And as such we had to take this node as it greatly boosts our clearing speed with chain explosions, as long as our enemies are cursed before they die. We are running a curse aura setup in this build, specifically for proccing this node. But finally, we have Forbidden Power. This node scales our area of effect and area damage with power charges. It also increases their maximum count by 1. And as it is the case with most spellcaster builds, stacking power charges is an easy way to get mirror tier level of damage with unique items. But with that we are done with our ascendancy. Now let's take a look at our passive tree. Our tree focuses on chaos damage, spell damage, power charges, spell crit chance and crit multi, area of effect, energy shield, and life. We are utilizing the interaction between Eldritch Battery and Mind Over Matter here. Next we have two large cluster jewels, each adding the minimum amount of passives. The first one adds some powerful chaos notables like Touch of Cruelty and Unholy Grace. The second jewel adds some powerful physical notables since Void Sphere is a physical based skill. We have Master the Fundamentals, Battle Hardened and Force Multiplier. From here we branch off into two identical medium cluster jewels. These add some powerful AoE notables like Vast Power and Towering Threat. Now for mastery choices, we have 40% of physical damage is converted to chaos damage, 3% increased damage per power, frenzy or endurance charge we have, plus 25% to critical strike multiplier against unique enemies, 15% increased maximum life if there are no life modifiers on our body armor, and plus 50 to maximum life. But with that we are done with our passive tree. Now let's take a look at our items. First we are dual wielding spellcaster signature power stacking weapon and that is Void Battery. This wand is beyond perfect for us. It grants us plus 1 to maximum power charges and lots of increased spell damage per power charge. We have 12 power charges in this build. That's 300% increased spell damage per wand. What's not to like about that? Anyway next we have Crown of the Inward Eye with plus 1 to maximum power charge corruption. Next on the list we have any rare ring with plus 1 to maximum power charges rolled on it. That can be either an implicit or an explicit mod. Rare or unique ring doesn't really matter. Remember that we said we will be utilizing every damage scaling mechanic and item we can find to make this build good. And unfortunately, you're gonna need two rings like these for Void Sphere since its damage sucks. I personally decided to buy Calandra's Touch as my second ring since that ended up being cheaper than buying another power charge ring. Now what's a good thing to do when you have many power charges? Simple, you use Badge of the Brotherhood. This unique amulet sets our maximum frenzy charges to be equal to our maximum power charges. It is a lot of damage assuming you find a way to generate frenzy charges. This amulet also makes our movement skills recover their cooldowns about twice as fast which is useful for our build in particular. Just don't forget to anoint infused on your amulet as it represents the last power charge which we couldn't manually afford to allocate on the passive tree. Now what's a good way to generate frenzy charges? Well, Ralakesh Impatience Boots it grants us our maximum number of all charges all the time. The charges are generated in passive mode, so you won't see any of them orbiting you visually. However, they still fully count toward their bonuses. Now for our chest, 
We have the Alas Malefaction, ideally corrupted with plus 2 AoE or plus 1 level of socket duration gems. You also want as many red sockets as possible. With our specific gem setup, this chest will give Void Sphere many levels, pushing it all the way to level 30. Spells gain around 10% more damage per level, so that's about double damage from one item. The downside is that this chest has nothing special going for it in terms of defense, but that is partially mitigated by one of our life masteries. Our next item, and the only rare one in this belt, we have double influenced rare gloves with resistances, life, energy shield, and essence crafted strength. You craft this by buying the gloves with fractured tier 1 life roll, spam essences of rage on them until you hit a decent resistance roll, and then slam the prefixes for energy shield. Although most importantly you need to get the Aether of Worlds 20% physical damage converted to chaos implicit. This can be added to an item via Grand Eldritch Acres, and it's mandatory for achieving 100% fist to chaos conversion on our void sphere. For our second Eldritch implicit, we got chance to unnerve enemies on hit. Now our last item in the build is Mageblood. I'm only using this build for the extra movement speed from Quicksilver Flask to compensate for the fact that our boots have no movement speed on them. It goes without saying, you can play this build without it since having movement speed is luxury and not a critical part of the build. But alas, we are done with our items. Now let's take a look at gems that goes inside of them. For our main 6 link we have Void Sphere of Rending Awakened Void Manipulation Level 4 Empower Power charge on crit, increased critical strike support, and increased critical damage. Next we have a 4 link aura setup. This one contains determination, despair, awakened blasphemy, and level 4 enlighten. Next we have a 4 link life reservation setup. We have herald of purity, vitality, arrogant support, and another level 4 enlighten. Our last 4 link setup is utilized to inflict weather debuff on our enemies. We have weather, spell totem, multiple totem support, and faster casting. Our last gem setup is a 3 link that contains few leftover gems. We got petrified blood, level 1 precision, and level 3 enlighten. Your remaining sockets can be used for whatever movement skill setup you like. I went with withering step and linked it with automation support to passively inflict wither debuff on nearby enemies while moving. But with that we are done with our gems, now let's quickly go over our jewels. First we have one militant faith timeless jewel that specifically mentions high templar dominus. Place it in this specific socket to maximize its effect. This jewel will convert all nearby keystones into inner conviction. Inner conviction grants us 3% more spell damage per power charge. Next we have a relatively new jewel that was added last leak, and that is the adorned. This jewel increases the effect of magic jewels by more than double as long as they are corrupted. Combining it with 4 magic jewels like this one will give you lots of life and damage. The last jewel is supposed to have 3% increased mana reservation efficiency in a state of life. This is required for our specific aura setup. Finally for our watcher's eye, we don't actually use one, such is the case with most chaos builds. Now for bandit's quest, we are going to help Alira. As for pantheons, we got the soul of the Brian King for its freeze immunity, and the soul of Abareth for its ignite duration reduction. And that was it for our path of exile take on black hole builds. If you guys have enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a like, and maybe consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future build guides like this one. My name is Phoenix, and I will see you all in the next video.